In this video, we're going to have a look at how to actually update our client computers, example, Windows 10, using our own computers, rather than it getting updates from Microsoft, okay, the Microsoft website, it can actually get the updates from our own computers, our own servers, okay? Now, we need to set up, basically, the Windows Server Update Service on another computer, for example, Server 2016, in this example, and we'll show you exactly how it's done and everything, starting now. Okay, the first thing to do is basically, in Windows Server 2016 or 2012 R2, okay, basically open up Server Manager. Now you can do that by clicking on the icon over there, or in 2016, it's over there and you open it up okay so server manager is open okay don't worry about this this is just a initial thing add roles and features okay click next and next okay basically choose the computer that we're installing it on for example this one okay and then basically what we want to do is windows server update services okay and once you tick that box it'll say what else is needed tick on click add next next okay you can install dotnet 3.5 features um, some people in the past have chosen to install that at the same time okay but it's not required okay that's fine just go with the defaults click next that's fine. If you had SQL Server running, basically you could use the SQL Server database instead of basically the Windows internal database. Okay, next. Okay, and then where do you want to store the updates? Okay, now generally we would advise putting on a separate hard disk, etc. Okay, now because it can be quite big. Okay, just as an example for Windows 10 with not all of the options ticked. I think it was about seven or eight gig itself. You know, at one point we had a very, very huge amount of updates. Okay, so we'll just create a simple folder now. Okay, as it's an example, updates, okay. And then next, okay, restart if required. Obviously, if you're running mission critical things, do not tick that box, okay? And then you can reset at a time that's good for you. Okay, and once that is completed, basically now you need to do the post installation task where you're configuring it, okay? Okay, once the configuration has finished, basically it should all go green over there. And now let's click on this. Right click on that and then let's open that up. Okay, and when it opens up, basically, this is how it starts. Okay, this is the initial configuration that you need to do. Okay, so basically, do you want to join the Microsoft Update Improvement Program? You can take yes or no based on your privacy settings. Next. Okay, synchronize from Microsoft Update. Okay, let it synchronize there. Okay. And if you need any proxy servers to go through, like if you have a proxy server in your environment, set that up so that it can connect up to the internet. Okay. And then now let it basically synchronize with it okay now that it has basically gone to the microsoft update website and check what all updates we can actually obtain on this computer okay it now gives us options to actually select from the range okay now you can choose all the languages that you might want we're just going to stick with english in this case okay now it's going to list all the products. You can click all products 
and we're going to have a very, very huge update drive space requirement. Or, in this case, what we're going to do, it even goes office, okay, goes all the Windows servers. What we're going to do, basically, is just go to Windows 10, okay, and choose the Windows 10 ones that we want. For example, Windows 10 over here, Windows 10 and later drivers, okay, these add on quite a lot. Basically, it downloads every single driver, okay, the features on demand, language packs. We're just going to select it like this for now. Okay, this is an example. Okay, as you can see, you could choose Windows 8.1, Windows Defender. Okay, and the servers over here. Okay, all right, click next. Okay, now you can choose from that what we want. We'll go with the updates. Okay, and click next. Okay synchronize manually or you can have your computer synchronize at a certain time each day okay in this case we're just going to go with manually as that's the thing okay begin the initial synchronization next okay and then basically what you might want to do is check a few of these things in case you have any problems at a future date okay just click finish okay and that opens up that and basically, what's going to happen, it knows how many updates it needs to download. It'll basically start downloading, and then it'll basically get all of them. And then at the top over here, it'll say, do you want to approve these updates? Okay, you can choose which of the updates from the list that it actually chooses. Okay, for example... It's already approved them automatically, but some you'll have to manually approve. Okay. When a computer connects to this, it'll be basically listed over here. If you want to go back to those options, you can basically choose the options over here. Okay. If you want to start cleaning up old updates, okay. Choose automatic approvals. Okay. You can have your own little policy set up over there. That's fine and product types if you want to modify the product types like we just had a few minutes back okay that is over there okay now we'll actually show you on a computer how it's already set up because this literally would need to download about seven gigs worth of downloads just for that windows 10. okay so we'll just pause this and come back now once it's been done okay you Basically, just need to approve them. Okay, for example, these are not approved. Okay, approve updates that you want to. Yeah, for all computers in which, shall we say, um, unassigned, like for example, computers that you've not really approved them and set them up yet. Okay, so you can basically choose approve for install for which groups. Okay. This we created ourselves. That's a group of computers. Okay, close. Oops. Let's just get rid of that. Okay. Now, if you want to create separate kinds of groups, for example, you might say Windows 10, Windows 8.1. Okay, only certain update patches for that group. You can keep create different groups. Okay, and that's how you would basically ensure. So now this is set up, as you can see, it's basically got that, approve that as well, okay, okay, and that's all been done. If you want to check which updates have not been approved, you can go there, as you can see, it literally lists every single update that we have not approved okay most of them we probably won't want but you might want to look through these just in case okay and critical updates are listed over there you can search by approved declined unapproved etc save for security updates and then the normal windows server update service updates okay let's now show you what you need to do on the client computers or 
if you basically are using group policy for your domain, you can push it from the domain side, but it's the policy that we're just going to show you. Okay, so we noted the IP address of this computer, or we could have basically done the server name. And we'll have a look at our Windows 10 now. Okay, now we are in our Windows 10 box. Okay, all we need to do is gpedit.msc. Okay. And then just run that. Okay. And let's just make that a little bit bigger. Okay. Basically, it's in the computer configuration. Okay. You could do it on a user basis, but computer configuration, Windows components. Okay. And then right at the bottom, you have Windows Update. What we have done on this computer is configure automatic updates. Okay, and there we go. Basically, what we've done is notify for download and notify for install. Okay, you could have it auto download, etc. This policy is not necessarily needed, however, it can be set up. Okay, what is actually needed is specify Internet Microsoft Update Services location enabled. And now all we've done is type in HTTP and then colon forward slash forward slash that IP address. Or you could have put in the server name. Okay. And then colon. And then it's port 8530. And then the same thing for that. Okay. Click OK. Basically. And then you can have this one also set up. So do not connect to any Windows update internet locations. Okay. Now. Because this has been applied on the local machine itself, you would either need to restart the machine or log out or basically go to the command prompt. Okay, and then type in GP update. Okay, that basically updates the policy. Okay, and once that finishes, all you need to do is just go into settings. Okay, go to update, and then basically, as you can see, that's been done. And then, once you check for, for updates, it'll basically connect to our server that was set up, and it'll either say there's updates that need to be updated, or it'll say everything's updated. Okay, like over here, it says your device is up to date. So, that's as simple as it is um basically this group policy thing if you were doing it from a domain side you'd obviously know how to shall we say apply it to all domain computers or etc etc based on active directory organizational units etc okay hopefully this has helped um thank you for watching